So it takes a lot of work to manufacture printed circuit boards for your manufacturers and also to assemble those components onto your printed circuit board. Okay, so manufacturers require a lot of files and a lot of detail and specifics down to just dot, dotting the I's and crossing your T's just to make sure your PCB gets done well. So if you want to learn how to save 2x three times, four times the amount of time it takes to generate your fabrication files and assembly files, in Altium Designer, then you want to watch through the rest of this video. Okay, here I have a design open, and normally the typical process you would do to generate your fabrication files would be to go to File, Fabrication Outputs, then you would do your Joe drawings, Final Files, Gerber X2 Files, IPC, ODB++, and all of these. Assembly Outputs, you would do your assembly drawings, blah, 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 and then also generate your drawing files and then PDF files and all of that. Now, here's the thing. If you get one mistake, if you make one mistake on your design, for each change or modification, you need to go back, make your changes, and then regenerate all of the files all over again. That is just a nightmare to me. That is a creativity killer, and it saps my motivation. So that's why I go the extra mile to make sure my design is done well according to the manufacturer's standards, okay, or manufacturer capabilities. Altium has set up a way for us to do this automatically with the click of a button. So to do that, you would generate something called the out job file here, okay? So we've got our printed circuit board and it's looking nice and pretty, but what you wanna do is go to your main project and add new to project and call it an output job file. What the output job file does is it actually organizes all of those files that you keep in a list and you know manufacture or uh, create manually it keeps them in a list in an organized fashion kind of like an excel spreadsheet that not only tells you what files you need to generate every time but actually does it for you automatically okay so if we go to netlist output you can output your netlist i'm not going to do that here because this is actually going to be a fabrication file so let's go to file save and this would be called fab2 or something i have other fab files in here so this out job file combines or compiles all the files that i would care about so let's say i want to add uh, you know my fabrication reports like pcb report board stack that's for my pcb document fine um you know if i want to add something like my gerber x2 files i can add that and i only have to do this once i only have to set it up once and it will always do these for me. Now, let's say I want my IPC2581 files for fabrication. My drill files, I will generate that as well. ODB++ files, why not? You can even do plain sets. And these are the files I would include for my fabrication. And I'm not going to include anything for assembly generally. If I want any specific reports, then I can do that validation reports, like maybe a design rules check report, just to make sure that I am in sticking to the design rules for fabrication purposes and then anything else you want to export but i'm going to stick with these now what do we do with these files once they're set up i used to get confused by the options on the right here but now that i understand how they work i can explain this to you so the report board stack this is just a report that tells you you know where to put your board stack and then these dots show you what can be translated or published into a PDF. And if I want to add those to a PDF file format, I can just ch click these in the order I want them to show up. Say I want a report, a board stack report that shows up in PDF format first, then I want my PDF to include drill and drawing guides, and then I want it to show the design rules check. They all go into the PDF and I can generate the content, but I won't just yet. My folder structure, I just want my raw files, right? So I can do uh, my Gerber X2 files in there. I can put my IPC 2581, my NC drill files, and my ODP++. And why not? Let's get the board stack up in there as well, too. Because you can never have too much information for your manufacturers. And then if you have any variants in your design, then you can choose your variant and then generate the files. You don't have to remember which files to generate each time you need to fix an error and send the new files to your manufacturer. So let's repeat this for the assembly out job file. Here I have an assembly out job file generated already. All you have to do is right click, add new to project, and then choose your 
outdrop file, give it a name assembly, and it's, this is what you get. Then you can set your items for assembly. Typically, I generate a net list for my assembly files. Then also for, for my assembly, I do a PCB 3D print in PDF format. Then also assembly drawings, you know, I add those as well to the PDF. You can generate pick and place files. You definitely want your pick and place files for your report. Okay. And then here's the test point report. You also want those as well, because uh, if you can get a board tested, make sure you do it. You know, why not? Okay. So these are all the files that you would want at a minimum for your assembly files, but it does not end there. I did say earlier in this video that you could do all of this with the click of a button. Here's the thing. Once you've set up all your files manually here, yeah, you set them up manually. You only set them up once. Then you go to your project, right click it. Then you can do the project releaser. This is where the magic happens. So as long as you don't have any design errors, all you have to do is hit preview and explore. And Altium will prompt you to save and then it will generate all of your design files for you going through food going through validation, generating the data, and reviewing that. And then once it's done generating your files, it has these nice folders to hold your assembly files, your schematic prints, your assembly drawings, and then you're able to like navigate your design. Click on specific components. and so on and so forth, right? And that's just the assembly drawing. You know, you can look at your, look at your fabrication drawing. So in here in fabrication, we have the fabrication drawing. This looks good, right? And then you're able to like go to different parts of the drawing based on what you click. So it's really nice to have this smart PDF, have your NC drill files and everything all packaged up nice and neat so that your manufacturer can have an easy time creating your printed circuit board. If you're not using Altium Designer, no worries, because if you go into the link that I provided in the description below, you can actually get Altium Designer for free and then try it out, test it out, learn how to use it, add the skills to your resume, become more attractive in the PCB design job market. And if you're trying to buy Altium Designer, you do get a really nice discount by using the link in the description below. If you haven't been doing this already and you're using Altium Designer, you can send your Gerber files to this website. That's Altium's online viewer, which allows you to uh, view, you know, your design files and for others to view design files without having Altium Designer installed. And then finally, is that Octopart allows me to find all of my files, especially during the silicon chip part shortage. So this helps me find parts that I normally may not find just by using DigiKey or uh, or a Mauser. Uh, this is very convenient. Okay. While it is useful to be able to generate all of these with the click of a button, um, you are still going to run into problems if your bill of materials is not put together correctly. Uh, you have all your fabrication good, but if you find that a part is missing, or uh, a part is something, the, the wrong part that you picked for some reason, because I've done this before, then it won't matter if you did the right footprint for the part because it's the wrong part or it's uh, the, the packages that are available are not available now since you submitted the printed circuit board like the day later. So how do you manage this? Do you just go to Octopart and then figure out, okay, well, you know, let me keep my spreadsheet and everything. Well, the problem with spreadsheets is that they are static and they do not keep up with the dynamic flow of things and what the market has available. So if you want to learn how to keep track of your uh, parts that are available and to make sure that they are good for your design before you send it out, then you want to watch my next video on how to use Altium's really cool bomb management tool that will allow you to do uh, to have no issues with your printed circuit board design assembly by the time you send out your PCB.